This is a supplement for working with peacock curl in fly tying. It gets a little bit confusing for some people that are new. First off, what is peacock curl? This is a typical peacock feather that you can purchase and actually use the hurls off of it if you want. The hurls are nothing more than these specialized barbs that run off. This is a, a peacock tail feather. And the hurls are the specialized barbs that run off of the main rachis of the feather. Now they can get kind of long down here towards the bottom, but for the most part, they're all similar in length, usually um, running your way up. They get a little bit thicker and with more iridescent colors as you get up towards the eye. I'll talk about the eye area in just a minute. Most people actually are introduced to peacock curl by using this, this product right here, which is a what's called a strung peacock curl. And a strung peacock curl is nothing more than the, all of these curls or barbs taken off of a feather like this and then bunched up. See all the white ends right here? That's the white curlies if I were to turn around and take one of these off. That's what I get is the, the white curly on the end right here. So these are all the butts and they're all pushed in through a sewing machine basically and stitched together. That's why they're strung. Now the big difference is, is that strung hackle is, is handled and managed a lot more than a typical feather like this. Typical feather like this is just plucked off the bird and then it goes off in a stack of other ones for either crafting or house decorations or something. Some shops will have uh, feathers like this that you can purchase, but they are handled much less. So the hurls right here, the barbs, tend to be fuller and more complete. The hurls in a strung package often are broken. They're shorter. A lot of times they're chipped up a little bit and they, they're squished and packaged and everything. Depending on the fly and depending on your application, the strung hurls are just perfect. They'll work fine for most things. Sometimes you want to go to uh, the actual hurls off of a feather because they're a little fuller. And if you're really looking for some nice full, these are the little barbules right here, often called uh, fluvals right there. These ones up by the eye are probably going to be about the densest that you're going to get. They're really, really nice. There's a, a lot of color there and they're very full. Now, there's some things you can do if you're going to process a whole feather like this or even with your hurls that are strung to kind of rejuvenate those a little bit. And the easiest thing to do is to steam them. This is just a small steamer that I purchased on Amazon. I'll have a link down below uh, to that if you're interested. But you just put some water in it, turn it on, it'll start to boil in just a little bit, and we'll have some nice hot steam coming out of it. What you can do is just pass the feather through that steam, and it rejuvenates all of the keratin that's in these, and they, they just kind of fill out a little bit better. Now, you don't have to have a steamer like this. Oops, I think we got some steam going. Try not to fog up the camera. Um, you don't have to have a steamer like this. You can do this with uh, just a pot of boiling water on your stove. But if you just take the hurls and you just pass it through that steam like this, both sides, you don't have to saturate it. You don't want to soak it down. The heat and the steam will help those hurls to puff back out. Just do this for a few, few moments, a few times, and it will bring those right back out. And I recommend if you're going to process a feather, the whole feather such as this right here, that you go ahead and do this while it's on the feather because it's a lot easier to just pass this around this way 
than it is to uh, when they're clipped off. Now, if you have some strong hurls like these and you're wanting to fluff those back out, I wouldn't put the whole strong hurl in there. It's just too thick. But what you could do is you could take out, you know, four or five that you're wanting to tie into your fly and you can steam those and that will actually help them to puff back out a little bit. When you do that, don't handle them a lot. Don't stroke your fingers down them because you'll just kind of squish all those uh, barbules back down. And that's basically what you can do with the peacock hurl. Turn this off. And I'm gonna wipe up this water a little bit. <laughs> Now, if I'm going to process this particular hurl right here that I have, uh, there's a lot of these broken ones that I would either ignore or, or just um, peel off. Peeling off, as you saw with that one that I peeled here, a lot of times it will still hook and it'll, it'll tear a lot of the rachis on down. So I prefer if I'm going to process this and then I want to set it aside for some tying or something, I'm going to reach in with my scissors and I'm just going to start snipping each one out right at the, at the base of it. And I'll work my way on up, getting close to the eye. Uh, hopefully I'm keeping this in frame. I have some that are busted off there. And I'll work both sides here. You could, you know, hold on to these as you're cutting them off if you want. Uh, these are all kind of dropping on the table, which I'll have to pick up and sort a little bit. Now, that gets both sides. <clears throat> Normally, I would go ahead and cut these off too. I'm going to assume uh, that I did. Some of these scraggling ones that I don't want, um, I don't want. So what I do then is just cut the rest of the rachis off. This is the eye right here. And even some of these right here could be considered hurls, good hurls for uh, tying nymphs, dry flies, wet flies, that sort of thing. We'll cut a few of those off. And then this eye right here, I'm going to save. Uh, I'm just gonna cut the rest of that off. And then I'm going to put this in a container. Generally, it's a little like open Plano box or a craft box, something like that. And this is going to be used for uh, various flies when I really, really want nice hurls that are going to be full. Or if I'm wanting to get into the eyes here and strip those, because these are what you want to strip. You can burn uh, with bleach. Uh, burn all this off and you just have the quills for like a uh, quill dry fly or a abdomen uh, and a nymph body or something like that with a quill. And then there's some other flies where you're going to want some of the iridescent colors in and everything, but these are probably where you're going to find the best hurls on that whole feather for really, really fancy tying that you're going to do where you're going to frame it or give it to a friend or something. All of these, I'm simply going to pick these up and get them all more or less matched up to their butts like this. And then I'll take a Plano box, some sort of a small craft box that has, you know, a long tray in it. And then I will simply put these in there. Being careful not to handle these too much because you don't want to, you fluffed all those out. You don't want to squish all those back up. And then you've got your hurls all processed. And then you'll have them in a special container where you know they're all nice and quality hurls. So these right here, even for most flies that I would tie, uh, whether they're going to be fished or even if they're going to be framed or something, these are nice quality hurls. If I'm going to be tying up some small nymphs, and it really doesn't matter, I'm looking for a dark spot and some of that iridescent color, 
I'm probably going to go with some of the strung hurl. Uh, but as you can see, these hurls are much skinnier. There's much less to them in terms of their width and everything um, and thickness compared to these hurls right here. So that's just a little bit of information on how you can process uh, the hurls off of a feather like this and then set those aside and you have a nice collection of steamed and processed peacock hurls for your fly tying. I hope that is, information is helpful. Uh, anybody else has any comments or anything, please leave them in the description down below. Send me an email. Let me know if you got some tips and tricks. Um, now, places I usually get the actual feathers, as I mentioned before, craft stores are great because people use these for home decorations and things. You just have to look over them. You want to make certain that you're getting a feather that has a lot of hurls from here on up that are not all busted up and bent and, and there's no barbules on them, so there's nothing on them. So you just look around, you can usually get a good price on those. Flea markets are good. Uh, antique stores are also a great place uh, because these things have been used for years in home decoration. So there's some other resources out there for acquiring the actual feathers. Um, if you're wanting to give that a try in terms of processing your own and then having some really, really nice hurls that is a little bit of a step above the strung hurls that you normally buy in the fly shop. So again, let me know if you've got any tips or tricks, any anything to add to this, and I will try and get that added in somewhere, maybe in a video. But until next time, just remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs>